Lord, the door cracks open to a new day and a new time. Fresh air and blue skies, faces we belong to see. You make all things new. It is not the same world we left, and it may never be again. But you are the God of restoration. You, O oh God, make a way in the wilderness, a river in the desert. Where we have turned away, Lord, we come back and pray for healing, for our land, for our people. We pray that you refresh our faith, our relationships, our communities, our purpose. We gather our courage, our hands will be strong, our voices will be loud, and we will carry the good news of your beautiful hope. As we step out, you are with us. Our work has just begun. Lord, 
the door cracks open to a new day and a new time. Fresh air and blue skies, faces we belong to see. You make all things new. It is not the same world we left, and it may never be again. But you are the God of restoration. You, O oh God, make a way in the wilderness, a river in the desert. Where we have turned away, Lord, we come back and pray for healing, for our land, for our people. We pray that you refresh our faith, our relationships, our communities, our purpose. We gather our courage, our hands will be strong, our voices will be loud, and we will carry the good news of your beautiful hope. As we step out, you are with us. Our work has just begun.
welcome to Church Online. Special welcome to all of you watching on our live simulcasts on Facebook, those who are watching live simulcasts on YouTube, and those who have joined us at Church Online at newlifebranton.online.church. Uh, we are so glad that you've all joined us today. Maybe you're watching after the live simulcast. You're watching, re-watching the recording. Uh, we want to say welcome to you as well. However you're watching, we're glad that you're here. And we hope that you'll leave a comment, that you'll uh, participate in the chats, and let us know that you're there. Leave a prayer request. Reach out to us. Uh, say amen uh, when you see, hear something that you really agree with, that resonates with you. We just want to be an encouragement to you. Most of all, we want to stay connected with you. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, you can reach out to us through our website, uh, or you can reach out right there where you're watching. We just love to to hear from you and stay connected. And if you're being blessed, why not share uh, the message with your friends and family so that they can be blessed as well. Just hit that share button and let them know that it's time for Church Online. We want to remember you in prayer. We've been praying for so many of you and, uh, and for essential workers and all of that. But if you have a special prayer request, feel free to leave that. Uh, if, it's, uh, if it's personal, you want to send it to us, you can do that through our website. On the homepage of our website, there are people that are waiting to pray for you. And so uh, please do that. We want to reach out to you. And if you're a guest here, and this is perhaps one of your first times uh, here with us, we want to say a special welcome to you and uh, let you know we have a gift for you. So reach out to us. Let us know that you're a guest, and we want to get you that those resources and, and just be a blessing to you. Well, we're going to head into our service. It's time to worship God, so let's uh, enjoy some worship and then uh, God's Word together today.
all-consuming fire in victory you reign. We triumph in your name. Jesus, the great commander, you conquer death forever. In victory you reign. We triumph in your name. Our God, a mighty warrior, your all-consuming fire.
we have a victorious God. He wants you to live a victorious life. If you believe our God is a victorious, why don't you just type uh, in the comments there an amen. Let us know that you agree. And uh, we just want to encourage you that God wants to bless your life and uh, help you to live victoriously as well so that someday when you see him face to face, you'll hear those great words, well done, good and faithful servant. Uh, we're going to go back into for some more worship in just a minute as the worship team is doing such a great job in leading us in some great songs. They have two more songs, one before the message and one after the message, and we're going to enjoy those together in a moment. But I want to let you know today that we have a special guest here with us. Dave Kingston is part of the uh, stewardship department of our international offices. He's been a pastor. I had the privilege of pastoring with Dave many years ago. He's got such an incredible heart for people. He really cares about people and wants to see them live their best lives and, and live faithfully before God. And I know he's going to be such a blessing to you today. And so please stay with us as he presents just uh, some really great biblical principles from God's Word about how you can leave a legacy and how uh, God can bless you and, and give you a victorious life. Then when all is said and done, you'll hear those great words, well done, faithful servant. Um, and another treat that we have uh, coming up is for families. We have a um, this coming Saturday on October the 31st, we have our family fall fair. Uh, it is just a wonderful opportunity for kids to come together, dress up in their costumes, and have a safe, family-oriented, socially distanced. You'll have your own time slot just for your family to travel to a couple of different stations to enjoy some cotton candy, to uh, get uh, uh, some a bag of candy for the kids, to get your family photos done, different activities that you'll get to enjoy together. All the details are in the description along with the video uh, and on our website, and so you can uh, participate in that. There's still a few spots left, so make sure you sign up today so that you don't miss out because uh, spots will be limited. And we need some uh, donations of candies as well. So if you want to drop by the church and give the church a call and drop by donations of candies that are pre-packaged, boxed, uh, that would be fantastic. As well, uh, we have a lot to thank God for that he has done this year. And we have our annual general meeting that is happening uh, Sunday, November the 1st. Uh, so mark that in your calendar. Be able to attend that meeting here at the church at 6 p.m., on the November the 1st. And if you're not able to attend, you can also uh, make arrangements to join us via uh, Zoom and be able to participate in the meeting that way. All those details are also with the video uh, and on our website. So make sure you plan to attend our annual general meeting uh, as we just talk about what God has uh, done this year and what he's about to do. Uh, and so just uh, thank you for uh, remembering us in prayer and for your generous uh, support as we give your tithes and offerings to the work of the Lord. We have done able to do so much this year in our community around the world with our global partners and we're just going to celebrate that. If you want to give, you can go to the homepage of our website at newlifebrampton.ca and there's a give button there as well. You can give through Interact uh, by, by sending your gift to give at newlifebrampton.ca and if you have any questions about how uh, to give, you can also send us an email at info at newlifebrampton. We'd be happy to help you. So we're going to go back to our service now for more worship to prepare your heart for what uh, the message God has for us today. And uh, as well, at the end of the message, I know Dave Kingston has a special offer to offer to you, something that might save you and your family uh, some money as uh, uh, he himself is qualified to do um, personal appointments that will, for free, that will be able to uh, give you a power of attorney documents and uh, will documents. And uh, I know Esther and I have done that, and it is professionally very well done. And so stay tuned. After the service, he'll talk about that. But let's go back and just worship uh, a little more before the message. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you, all of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love, my comfort, my shelter.
I want to bring greetings to you and your family on behalf of the National Stewardship Department of the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. My name is David Kingston. I'm the National Director for Stewardship Services and I'm here to present what we call the Radical Stewardship Seminar to you and to your family. We're, we're calling this Growing a Kingdom Legacy where we are called to best steward the great resources that God has given us in our lives. There's a number of resources that we are responsible for that God has put under our feet as His creation. One of them being our time and another being the talents and, and, and the gifts that He's given us. And, Another being really the treasures that God bestows upon us and has flowing in to our lives. We know a lot of them flow out of our lives and we make the decision on how they flow out as good stewards for God. So I wanted to just take this time to go over some very practical, some very biblical uh, uh, principles with you. We have six principles we're gonna talk about, but in Luke chapter 16, let's start it off with scripture because this is very biblically based. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with very much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. There is the, the more so principle of scripture that God trusts us in small portions and then allows us more resources as we earn his trust. It's reasonable and fair. It goes on to say, so if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches, with the deeper things, the more important things of the kingdom? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? Makes sense, does it not? That we can't serve the two masters that we are always trying to look at. You can't serve two masters, either one, you'll hate one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. That's what the scripture says. So you can't serve both God and money. I love what it says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides for us everything for our enjoyment. That's the foundation of what we're teaching today, that true riches are based upon the great things that God does in our lives by His Spirit, not just the resources of money. We need to be rich in this world and not be arrogant. Command them to do good, he says, with these riches, to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. So I want to spend some time in this seminar going over what we call six deep-rooted principles. Well, let's talk about our first deep-rooted principle called finding the spot marked X. Now that's just really dealing with where you are at today. If It's difficult to follow directions if you don't know where you are to start. It's like going to the shopping mall and you walk in and you want to find a particular store. The best way to do it is to look at the mall map and look at where you are and then you have a plan to get where you're going. And I think when we begin to ask ourselves the questions about where we're at in our financial lives, in our stewardship lives, there's a couple of things we really need to consider emotionally. It's difficult to follow directions if you don't know where you are, so you need to be honest. If you're lost, admit it. You need to be open. It's time to really show and tell about where you're at. It's time to be thoughtful. How did you get to this spot and, and why are you where you are? And it's also important to be emotional. It's okay to get a little bit worked up like this couple who are talking and uh, the husband who saw his wife do a little construction in the bedroom said, apparently I've done something to upset you. It's okay to get a little bit worked up on things that are important. So, and it's also okay to get hopeful. We talk about getting out of debt in this seminar, which is really important in many ways so that you have the freedom to be able to do what you're called to do as the Lord's servant with all of your resources. And one of the greatest challenges we have is, is debt and spending, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Matthew 6, verse 33 and 34 tells us, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Is that saying don't plan for tomorrow? He's saying don't worry for tomorrow because God will provide, but we still need to be good stewards along the way. For in Luke 1 37 says, for nothing is impossible with God. And Luke 18 says, what is possible with men, impossible rather with men, is possible entirely with God. And he will be our source and resource through the days. We can trust him with our resources. 
So let me tell you, first of all, in this spot marked X about the fundamental law of economics. It's a very simple financial exercise to find the spot marked X. It is what we call the OO law of finance. The first O relates to everything you own. And the second O relates to everything you owe to your creditors and whomever. And so you take O number one, your owning, and you subtract O number two, your owing, and you get what we call your net worth, what you're really worth after everything is said and done. And that's when you say, uh-oh, perhaps, who knows? So here is a little graph for you, a list of what I own. These are some of the uh, possible things that you, you, you own or you think you own at this time. And I'll throw in some numbers there, just average numbers for a family of a house and the condo and automobiles and uh, you know, vacation property, some investments, securities, savings accounts, add it all up and you think, wow, I've got that much uh, in my life, that much uh, value in my life. But then you have to ask yourself, well, what do I still owe? What's the second O is what I own. So look at the things that I owe. I owe still 370 for the house and I still owe 12,000 for the automobile and I still owe 8,000 to my mother-in-law as a personal loan, which I'd like to get out of as quickly as possible. So when you begin to see what I own is 558 in this scenario and what I owe is 428 in this scenario, my net worth, my net value is really the difference of those two. It's $130,800 in this particular scenario. So we begin to assess that in our lives and we ask ourselves, what do I need to do next when I begin to find out what my, my net worth is? Well, deep principle number two, we need to set some goals. We need to look from here to there, ask ourselves the questions, how long will I take to get from where I am to where I'd like to be? Will it take me a couple of months, two months, two years? Will it take me longer because I'm in some pretty difficult times right now financially? Uh, it, you have to begin to start thinking ahead and set some goals. Goals have to have some great attributes. Number one, they should be specific. Secondly, they should be measurable. Thirdly, they should be attainable, uh, realistic, and of course, timely. So these are all setting goals that are reasonable and attainable and smart. Don't go off for the big lofty goals that are way in the future because as soon as there's a bit of a turn in the road, we begin to get discouraged and we stop thinking about our futures. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be curves in the road. There's going to be challenges especially in the world that we see right now, there are many challenges that we didn't see coming even 12 months ago. So our goals have got to be realistic and timely. And it's okay. Which brings us to the deep-rooted principle number three, which is actually creating a real financial plan in your life. And so, first of all, in a financial plan, we make a commitment to God. He's always first because He is the source of all of our resources. And we're happy to give back to God what we owe Him, what is due to honor and respect Him. Because Proverbs 16, verse 3 says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. And the second thing we always say is get help from informed people or reliable sources. Proverbs also talks about that in verse, uh, chapter 21, verse 5. Uh, the plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. So... I wanted to share with you that you really need to talk about what we call the old McDonald law of economics in your life, the E-I-E-I-O law. Easy to remember when you begin to see what it's all about. First of all, the first E-I is what we call your expected income. Now you're going to have income from different sources, your wages, perhaps unemployment insurance at this time. Uh, you're going to have pensions if that's the case as a source of income, Canada, company, you're going to have investments, uh, you're going to have possibly rental income, and you may be self-employed. I'll throw in some numbers there so you can see in general what a scenario might look like. That is what you would expect to come in on a monthly basis. So the other EI is what we call expenses incurred. And this is when you begin to spend the money that's coming in regularly. What you expect, you then plan to spend. We talk about the Lord's share, the tithe, the offerings being at the top of the list. We talk about household expenses, food and clothing and all those things being secondary, monthly payments for creditors, mortgages, automobiles, and then of course investments and savings for your future. So if we were to throw some numbers in there, you see that in this particular financial situation, 
the, the income expected or that was inspected at the beginning and the expenses incurred uh, really balance each other out. If you look at it, it's the expected, the, the incurred um, comes to a, a balance of zero at the end of the month. What you brought in is what you spent. It's probably good to have a little bit left there uh, to make sure that you're budgeting and you're planning for a healthy financial plan, a, a plan with a bit of profit, so you have a bit of leeway. But that EIEIO is very easy to understand. It really tells where you're at on a monthly spending basis. There's also what I call the Einstein law of economics. So there was old McDonald, now there's Einstein. This is what we call FIRE. This is when you either find income to help with that monthly expense and income, or and or you have to learn how to reduce expenses. This is the only way to change your financial position is either find income so you have more or reduce your expenses so you have more. There's no really other way to do it to improve your spot marked X, your, your financial situation. So we always encourage people to ex reduce expenses primarily because finding income is a little tougher than reducing expenses. And that's why reducing expenses is our key teaching in something like this. So our deep-rooted principle number four is to learn how to manage your spending. And now people don't always like to be told what to do, but if you really want to be successful with your resources, you really need to, to look at this seriously, how you spend. There are lots of important players in our spending, things that we control, things that we can't control. Our primary source uh, for giving and for blessing is to God. We honor him with the first fruits of all that God gives to us. The second one is Canada Revenue, who takes always a portion of what we earn and uh, uses it for our beautiful country and for helping us to be safe and uh, sustainable uh, resources and, and services. And then our families, myself, my wife, my kids, I need to consider how I'm going to best honor God's call for me to protect them, to feed them, to clothe them, to house them. And then there's the creditors and our employers and our neighbors and other people around us that we have to consider. So we're just going to talk about each of those for a moment. God always comes first, Matthew 6. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. We already covered that. And that don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Every day has enough trouble of its own. So just be content that God will always provide. Bring the whole tithe, it says in Malachi, the Old Testament, chapter 3, verse 10. Bring it into the storehouse that there may be food in my house, the Lord says. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have enough room for it. Isn't that a great promise from God? That if we give back to him what really is his anyways, he will promise and ask us to even test him in this, that he will provide enough blessing that we won't even have enough room to store it. I love these, uh, these guys here are having a conversation when the one guy says to the other, giving was hard when I was rich, <laughs> but now it's easy because I'm not really sure I have that much to give at all. <laughs> but God has called us to, to put him first. Luke chapter 21, great story. As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts in the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. I tell you the truth, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had even to live on. That's a, that's a challenge to us, that this woman saw the value of putting God first. So, that's, that's how we live our lives. God always comes first in all things. But then we have to deal with the tax man. I love this little comic here. It says, Dear Revenue Canada, I'm writing to cancel my subscription. Please remove my name from your mailing list. If only it were that easy. But we know that there is good news about the tax man that we can share with you today. The Canada Revenue Agency encourages us to give to God and to charity and the tax department promises to refund about 40% of the amount we give to, to ministry to the church. Actually, uh, realistically, we are being given back what has been deducted from our earnings or our pensions that's being renewed back to us to use for God. It's interesting that new tax law allows us to receive tax credits for giving 
almost up to 75% of taxable income in some cases. And estates can go as high as 100% tax rebate on gifts that are given through the estate. So those are good news items for us with the tax men. Now here's the other news that we understand that responsible citizens have to pay taxes, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, to help make this country the greatest place in the world to live in and to serve God. It is God's will for us to pay our fair share of taxes. But if we can pay our fair share and not pay extra, we can use those resources elsewhere. So it's always good to get advice. Taxes are part of our lives. It's who we are and what we do. But we need advice because Proverbs 15:22 says, plans fail for a lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they can succeed. So we always encourage you to go to someone who is an expert to get you the best and most fair assessment to your tax giving. So thirdly, we talked about the tax man, we talked about God, me and my family. These are important things. Saving for rainy days is crucial. Now, in our particular situation today, we've taught this before many times, that it is suggested that everyone should have an emergency fund equivalent to about three months of their income. And people often say, wow, I don't know if I can put that much money away. This is, again, a a measurable goal over time, one of those from here to there goals. And we know that in our current situation, some of us may have wanted to do this years ago, considering where we're at today and and the challenges that we have with income in this post-COVID-19 world. We know that there are ways that we can save and we can make it a healthy savings. Here's a good piece of advice is consider starting a pre-authorized debit transfer into a savings or a tax-free savings account on a regular basis whenever you receive income. Proverbs 21 verse 20 says, In the house of the wise are stores of choice foods and oils, but a foolish man devours all that he has. It's better to put a little bit away whether you work with cash and do the end of the day change into a jar or whether you do electronic banking and you transfer over, it's good to have a plan to start saving money for the rainy day. So we talk about our employer next. Our employer mandated to take off the mandatory uh, uh, deductions on our paychecks, our CPP, our EI, our, our income tax. Those are part of the process of paying the tax that we have to pay and our employers have to do that. So we understand that we have a gross amount and a take-home amount on our our paychecks. And Proverbs 22, verse 7 says, this is the way the world works, that the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. So we have to adhere to that teaching. We talk about dealing with debt. And um, one of the ways that we can deal with debt is here are some, some, some helpful hints. Stop credit card spending because it can get out of hand very quickly and interest rates are so high on our credit card spending, especially past the 21-day mark, interest is accrued. Pay off all debts, charging highest interest first if you want to change your spot marked X and your, your, your net worth value. Get rid of the highest interest payments first. Write all your creditors if you're in some more difficult times and explain your plan to pay your debts. Often creditors would rather have something than nothing and they would rather have communication than silence. And consider some lifestyle adjustments on how you spend and how you distribute your resources. How to get out of debt is so important. Proverbs 22 verse 3 says, A prudent man sees danger and takes refuge, but the simple keep going and suffer for it. So prudency means that we we hide behind these principles of what the scripture is teaching and we embrace them. Stop any form of borrowing if you can until you get your head above water. Develop a budget, which is crucial to understanding how you spend your money along the way. And budgeting is a pretty simple process. Here's a good example with some percentages, general percentages of budgeting. And, you know, tithes, tithes and taxes will come off the top usually if we adhere to the God comes first principle. Then we talk about our housing, our food, our auto, our debts, our clothing, medical, entertainment, savings, all these things. We've given general percentages to them. If you don't know what you're spending and you don't know what your percentages are, there's a very good beginning for you to understand true budgeting in your life, to understand how much you're spending on entertainment or or insurance or whatever based on your income. So work out a plan to pay back 
difficult things to difficult creditors, exercise self-discipline as a lifestyle, seek counsel, learn to trust God, and help yourself to get out of debt. The next thing on managing your spending is your neighbors. Now this is a really important teaching in the scripture because Christianity really taught the world about what charity is truly all about. We taught the world charity in many ways. Your neighbors, the scripture is very clear who our neighbor is, Luke 10, classic story. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it, Jesus said. Well, he answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, you have answered correctly. You're, you've got the head knowledge. But he says, you need to do this and you will actually live. But he wanted to justify himself being very religious. He, so he asked Jesus, okay, then who is my neighbor? And in reply, Jesus said, all right, here's a parable or a story. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers and they stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. That may surprise us, but it happened. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and he took care of him. Now, if you know the story and the history of Samaritans, they were a, a culture that was blended with Jewish culture, and they weren't necessarily considered the, the highest class of citizen. But yet the Samaritan had a high class of a heart, and he followed the biblical teaching of who is my neighbor. The next day, it says, he even went as far as taking out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper and said, look after him. And when I return, I will reimburse you for the extra expense that you may have. This guy is going the extra mile here. Which one of these three, Jesus asked, do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? Well, what, what, what else could the, the expert in the law say except the one who had mercy on him? And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Christianity has been the source of charity and the resource for charity for many years. Proverbs 11 says, it is possible to give away and become richer. It is possible to hold on too tight and lose everything. Yes, the liberal man shall be rich by watering others and he will water himself in the meantime. So that's the Living Bible uh, resource there telling us that we really need to understand what true riches is all about. Romans 5 goes on to say, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is the most expressive form of charity I think we could ever see. Which brings us now to our fifth deep-rooted principle, planning for retirement, our futures, how we're going to look ahead into the next days of our lives. Now, we're all at different uh, parts of that journey. Uh, and uh, I love this little uh, comic with the husband and wife where she's got the little plate out begging and he's saying, this is our retirement plan. Well, in these days, the retirement plans are a very important thing to consider, especially because of if you look at the Canadian population projections for our future, if you look at the green part of this graph, that's the actual birth rate in Canada with projections to 2031. And you can see we're on a declining balance of birth rate. But if you look at the, the other section, the retirement section, you see that we're on an increase as all the baby boomers begin to retire and are retiring the younger generation who are working and paying into CPP and all of those, those funds are trying to fund all the retirement of many of us that are a little bit older and ready to go. Well, we know that uh, that can't last forever. One guy says to the other, if all the boomers retire, who's going to pay our pension? And the other guy goes, yikes. So we need to be prepared ourselves to take action in these areas. 
Retirement planning for the ages is what I want to share with you. You need to consider your retirement plan at different strategic ages. The first one being really age 55. Where are you going to be at in your retirement resources? At age 65, you may be ready to retire or have retired, and you, may, you need to look at it then. And at, even at age 71, going into that threshold of the 70s and beyond, there are other things that are available with regards to retirement. So you need to avail yourself of an understanding that those are strategic times to stop and look at where you're at. Of course, we know that there are things coming our way. Canada pension is, would, would be a constant payout to us through the years once we retire. Old age security is also at different ages. We receive old age security. It's a constant payout through the years. Uh, and pensions, maybe you have a work pension. We have other pensions that we have done through the years through business or work that will be coming to us as well. Those things are constant, but they will equal a value that we have to live on. And if you don't think that you can live on the total value of those three things or those things coming together, you need to consider investments now so that you can have extra income then to meet your monthly income goal when you retire. Please remember that with inflation, things will be more expensive then. So you even need to add on that aspect to it that there's going to be less that you can buy with the same amount of money that you're making today. So investments include things like RSPs, tax-free savings accounts, uh, real estate investments, GIC, stocks, bonds, annuities, the list goes on. And we really encourage you to talk to a financial advisor as to where you're at, where you'd like to be, and where you're going, and what realistic numbers are. But you should do it soon. If you're younger, it's never too early. If you're older, it's never too late to look at your plan for retirement. Here are some possible things that you can look at that I just mentioned quickly. RSPs, uh, Canada Revenue Agency, informs us each year that your notice of assessment uh, how much you can then contribute that particular tax year to RSPs. It's usually an eligible amount based upon 18% of your previous year's income, a maximum of $23,820 a year, but it accumulates from year to year to year and unused amounts are carried to future years. RSPs are a great uh, investment. They do have usually a time value and an interest payment. At the other end, you will pay taxes when you retire on them. So you have to consider that in your end goal as well. Mutual funds, another investment that are market-based usually, will have an increase or a fluctuation of, of interest value through the years. Again, look for a good advisor to help you with those. We offer a couple of things through the National Office of the PAOC to help churches and ministries. Uh, the PAOC, what we call the PFSG notes or term deposits the uh, Pentecostal Financial Services Group. And these notes are interesting because they help churches uh, who are, are, are receiving loans for construction, renovations, or refinancing, and they're one to five year competitive rate uh, deposits that you receive interest that is a little bit higher than the chartered banks for a GIC or very competitive and it helps out the kingdom. So those are things that you could possibly consider. The only thing you need to note is that there is a maximum of 20% of your total liquid assets that you can invest by way of the government law. But those are things you can talk about by calling our national office. There's also PAOC gift annuities for those who are in their senior years over 70 years old where you give a gift and you receive an interest rate and the older you get the better the interest that you income that you can live on in your retirement years. So the gift annuities provide regular payments for the rest of your life guaranteed and the life of your spouse no matter how long, and the interest rate is based on your age. The older the age, the higher the interest. So just a, another thing to consider along the way if you're looking for options for investing. Um, but all of these things help you to understand that you need to take advantage of the power of compound interest, that you need to make interest on your interest as the years roll on. So compound interest simply means that interest is earned on interest. If you look at this particular chart, it gives you an idea that compounding magnifies the impact that, a, that giving an interest rate will do. When you receive $10 on your, your, your $100 investment, the next time you're receiving $110 interest, you may be at 115 and then you're at 120 and it's all interest on interest. So it helps the time value of money and the multiplication of money along the way. And which brings us to our last principle, and that is not only planning for retirement, but we need to talk about our estate planning, what we call doing the final touches. 
the legacy planning for our lives, the leaving behind a legacy, growing your kingdom legacy, radical stewardship idea. We talk about the final touches. There's two items that really every adult in Canada needs, and that is, number one, power of attorney documents, and number two, uh, wills that are up to date and ready to be used. Uh, The power of attorney, very simple. While you're still here, you're going to need to make some decisions about who would make substitute decisions for you with regards to your property and managing your investments, your financial side, and a secondary power of attorney to talk about your health and your personal care should you not be able to make decisions for yourself about your wishes. And those are important people that you need to to help. Here's a little expression. He says, just so you know, I never want to live in a vegetated state dependent on some machine. I think some of us have said that through the years. If that ever happens, just unplug me, okay? And the wife says, okay. So she gets up and unplugs the TV. Who knows? I don't know if that's your household, but that is what she interpreted it. Now, in this particular case, we're trying to encourage you to make people in your life, trustworthy people, your substitute decision makers for these important things. The second thing is the document of the will. Uh, I, I love what it says in James chapter 4, verse 13. It says, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or to that city, spend a year there, carry on business, make money. Why you don't, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. I know it's not always easy to talk about your will, And when we get into the appointments with people, there's often some emotional side of of this process of thinking ahead, what will happen to my kids, my family, my spouse, uh, what kind of a legacy will we be leaving for them? You know, it's interesting in Canada, only three out of 10 adults have prepared a will that is actually ready to go. And mostly in the lower income brackets, statistically, but generally most adults don't have a will ready to go. Many say they don't have enough, in their estate or they think they may die penniless because they want to spend it all now. Uh, many say that wills are only for the elderly or those who are sick or have been had, had diagnosis. Some say there's plenty of time and what we've said in terms of our experience is, yeah, right. You would be surprised at how many people have said these things and um, at some point uh, they were surprised by the state of the union of their lives. So that's why we say you need a new or updated will in your life. And uh, if you're over 18 years of age, if you are recently married or divorced, your marital status has changed, uh, if there are special family concerns that you have in in your family, uh, if it does not reflect your current thinking and you want to revise that thinking about where you'd like to leave your legacy funds, if it does not provide for the Lord's work and you want to include a charitable aspect, Uh, Or if you're a new parent and you want to name guardianship for your kids, it's important that you have a new or an updated will. The advantages to having a will is it avoids conflict at a very highly emotional time of loss. It makes everything a lot smoother through those planning times. It controls the way that your assets are distributed based upon your wishes, provides for special circumstances if that's the case, and it secures the future of minor children, naming guardians and trustees for them to assure that things will be done the way you wish with your kids' upbringing. Allows you to make provisions for some of your assets to go to the Lord's work. And you may save the estate money. You may have taxable benefits by having a will that, especially with a charitable component, will buffer the taxes on your final estate. The first questions that you need to answer with regards to having a will is, number one, who will be the executors? the ones who execute or take over the will's execution after you pass, who will be the guardians of your minor children, at what ages should you have the assets distributed to your children in trust, do I want some of my assets to continue to support the ministries that I have supported for many years as a legacy gift again, or will I do it myself or get some assistance or turn it over to a lawyer? These are all questions that we need to ask if we don't have a will in place. Here we have just a flow chart for you, what I call a traditional will flow chart. So you have on the top left corner, you have the spouse number one and spouse number two. Married couple in this particular case, if you're a single adult, it's just really adult number one. And then you see that after one spouse has passed, all assets go to spouse number two. 
And if they pass within 30 days or soon after, all of the assets will go to the, the estate account. But in the, before it gets there, all the debts have to be paid. That's number one. The income taxes have to be filed. And then you, you're taxed on your RSPs, your capital gains, your investments, and all of that. And if, there's a threshold amount in Canada right now at $41,000 that if you are above that in your final income, you're taxed at 38%. If you're below that, you're taxed at 20.5% on all of that, and then it goes into the estate account. And then after all that and the fees are paid, the residue goes to the children in equal shares. So it goes to your children in equal shares. Here's a question for you. How long do you think it takes for a beneficiary to spend his or her inheritance statistically in Canada? Believe it or not, it's spent in less than six months. That's why many people consider a charitable will expression so that some of their final resources go to a, a ministry or some kind of event for the Lord's work. Here is another scenario now, what we call the charitable will, which is the, the second option. Same similar chart, spouse number one, spouse number two, all the debts are paid. Uh, income taxes have to be filed if you follow the flow. Your RSPs, capital gains, investments, all of that's the same. The $41,000 threshold goes into the estate account. But if in the will there is a charitable gift, say, for instance, 10%, like a tithe, to the Lord's work, there is a tax rebate coming back into the estate account of almost 45 and as high as 70-some percent on certain estate items that will buffer the taxes on the final income tax expression that will allow your children, the residue of your children in equal shares to be almost exactly the same as the traditional will payout, but you got to express yourself in your final days to help in the Lord's work. We offer both of these will expressions when we make appointments with people and it's done in private and it's done as per your wishes based upon your family situation, your age bracket and your assets. So the charitable will facilitates a number of things. Uh, it helps reach lost people everywhere. It helps planting and building churches everywhere. It helps equipping and training leaders. And it helps for the caring for the orphans, the widows, and feeding the hungry. Biblical mandates that we're called to, if you are willing to consider that. The charitable also recognizes the blessing of God. It expresses a personal philosophy of life that really can be expressed to family and friends and grandchildren and children and aunts and uncles and parents about who we are as people while we've lived on the earth and how we've transitioned into the arms of the Lord. Matthew 6 says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. There is this heavenly treasure chest that we are investing in when we give as unto the Lord for his honor and for his glory. That will last forever and not burn up in the final judgment. So the charitable will demonstrates values to family members that are left behind as to where we stand with God, kind of provides a sense of self-satisfaction as we live our days of service, knowing that at some point uh, I, I'm going to be sending something to the Lord as a legacy gift. And of course, at the end, then there's Revenue Canada, who will step in and do their best to take what they can for the sake of our beautiful country but if you're prepared in your will and your planning in advance, you can still release some of those great things as unto the Lord and to your family and friends. And at the end of it all, I just want to say to you, and God will say, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness, Matthew 25. I'm so happy that you've taken the time to uh, journey through this Radical Stewardship Seminar with me today, uh, Growing a Kingdom Legacy, and just want you to know that there are other resources available to you on our website. There will be even new resources that we're developing to help with uh, aspects of budgeting and, and tracking spending and that sort of thing at paoc.org under the Fellowship Services banner under Stewardship Services. We'll be able to help you in the days to come with some great resources and we just want to thank you in cooperation with your pastor uh, we're going to be making some appointments to get together with you over the next days uh, to facilitate those appointments for wills and powers of attorney free of charge 
and we're happy to do that as a service to our community, to our churches, and to our fellowship. May the Lord bless you in, and your family as you properly steward the great resources that God has given us, and we'll talk again soon. God bless. Thank you, Pastor David, for that important message. We all want to be good stewards of what God has given to us, and I think this free resource to you is very important. So if you want to make an appointment with Pastor David, you can uh, do that through his email, and he'd be happy to meet with you and to take care of you. Esther and I have done this, and it's an important part, I think, of being a good steward of all that God has given to us. And I want to thank you for joining us today. We're going to have one more song of worship, and I just ask you that to seek God during this time, and, uh, and we hope to see you again soon. God bless you. Yeah.